Hello and welcome back. It's very nice to be here. I am home alone today, or I have been since about 10.30, and I've had a lovely time. I made myself some waffles, which was, they were really good. I did Max's trick of mixing soy milk and um, <laughs> apple cider vinegar in a jar and shook it up and that's the method he uses for his buttermilk pancakes and I did it for the waffles just for lols and they were really really nice and then I had a day of or a few hours of sorting out my clothes doing lots of washing etc which is what we are mainly going to be talking about today because one of you requested and I think this has been requested a couple of times, a video on how to wash and take, take better care of our clothes. And so that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. I'm just giving myself a tiny bit of a facial massage and I've just got a bit of this typology creme hydrante visage acide hilaronique, 1%, 1%, 1%, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I went for another facial recently. The lovely folks at Sarah Chapman very kindly invited me down. And you know, if you if you watched the last video, you know that I'm embracing the facial life, so I couldn't say no. In this facial that they very kindly gifted me, 20 minutes of it was a facial massage. I honestly felt afterwards like my face had done an entire workout. It was ext like extreme. My face did feel really, really lovely afterwards. And they do this one, which I quite enjoy, which is when they like get under the eyebrows. And you can do this yourself. Get under the eyebrows and then all around the jaw, which I can't do very well, but is really important if like me, you clench your jaw, which a lot of us do. So before we start talking about the main subject of today's video, I would like to say a huge thank you to Sky Cinema Club you might know that I'm part of Sky Cinema Club and I get to watch and review films. This month's film is How to Please a Woman and it is directed by Renee Webster. It stars the wonderful Sally Phillips, who you might recognise from films such as Bridget Jones's Diary and Bridget Jones's Baby and of course Notting Hill. She is just a really fun screen presence and I think she really carries this film. It is about a woman who is very, very entrepreneurial. She loses her job and then she founds this business where you can hire men to clean your home and to also give you orgasms. And I really love the fact how at the moment there are what seems to be a few films. I know there's another one out starring Emma Thompson, which really seem to be putting women's pleasure at the forefront, especially women's sexual pleasure which is so, so important. It's quite saturated in color, which is quite joyful. The scenery is really beautiful. It's just very uplifting. And you know what? It is really, really refreshing to see middle-aged women having a good time and prioritizing the things that they should be enjoying. And that's another kind of aspect of film and television that we don't see all that much. We don't really see women past the age of 35 all that much. So it's just really, really wonderful to see these kind of films um, and for them to really stand for something that's not just a woman taking up the role of a mother or whatever it is. This is very much about Sally Phillips's character finding herself, being entrepreneurial, seeking and prioritizing joy for all of her friends and lots of other women. I really enjoyed it and I would recommend it. It's a really fun, easy watch. And if you do see it, let me know. Hello, it's me from the future. I missed something really important out of this Sky section that I want to tell you about quickly. Apologies for the sound quality, the video quality, all the rest of it. Not only has my camera decided to stop working, my coffee machine has decided to stop working. I have an eye infection and I'm a mess. So the next vlog is going to be really fun, but I just wanted to tell you that Paramount Plus has now launched on Sky. 
which is really exciting. Paramount are obviously a massive film company and they have some iconic films on their roster, which you can now watch via Sky. Some of my faves include Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which fun fact is my dad's favorite film, Pulp Fiction, and the iconic Saturday Night Fever. Those moves, absolutely unreal. So super cool that Paramount Plus films are now included on Sky. I am very, very much looking forward to at-home movie nights with all the popcorn, all the good stuff. And now we will get into talking about caring for our clothes. So I think it's really important to start this section of the video by talking about how, if you are someone who feels like your clothes don't last very long and you get quite frustrated by looking after your clothes. This is because we currently live in a world where it is cheaper for you to buy new clothes than it is for you to take care of the ones that you already own, which is completely wild. It is not your fault. It's the system of fashion. Fashion would like you to keep buying more clothes and throwing them away than it would for you to buy less and take care of what you already own. And because of the pressure that the fashion system is putting garment makers under, for example, Shein's garment makers only get paid if they fulfill a certain amount of items of clothing in a day as opposed to the hours that they work. So this isn't to discredit their craft. These are incredibly talented, skilled people who are in some cases making really really well crafted clothes but they are under a lot of pressure so occasionally these clothes are not potentially as long lasting as clothing might have been a couple of decades ago or might be when you buy a piece of clothing from a small brand which is not under as much pressure also another thing to take into consideration is that fabrics ha have changed a lot the majority of our clothes now it's over 60 percent are made from polyester polyester, anything poly is always plastic. It's derived from fossil fuels. So there is a lot going on systemically. So if you are someone who feels like you're not very good at looking after your clothes, know that everything is against you and it's really, really, truly not your fault. And there are things that you can do and we're gonna talk about those things. But equally, I want to do another kind of preface and say I, would rather we were collectively in a system where it wasn't as cheap to buy clothing as it is. We were encouraged to wear more and wear longer and that was just standard practice. And individual action is great, can be really good for your mental health. I for one absolutely adore looking after my clothes and taking this time for me. And this time that I have doing this practice is very much a privilege. But the main thing is really about systemic change and that's so if you're someone who's just come, who just comes to things like sustainability from an individual perspective, my aim is that you do what I did, which is come at them from an individual action and then whoosh, we're thinking about the systems and we're thinking about capitalism and we're thinking about patriarchy and we're thinking about all of that stuff. It's fun here, right? There are some really simple ways to make your clothes last longer. The first is by washing them less. I know it's not really what you want it to hear necessarily, but it truly does help prolong the longevity of your clothes. For example, jeans. I barely ever wash these, mainly because it's a very, very intensive process to wash anything in a washing machine, but these are dense and thick and I tend not to wash them. Or if I do, it's maybe once a year. A really good hack is to put them in the freezer overnight. This removes pretty much all of the um, bacteria in them and it kind of brings them back together and is much lower energy, etc. Lower water, etc, etc, etc. Similarly, knitwear, I don't wash really at all. That's because fibres like wool can really shrink um, and also because it's really easy to clean them without using a washing machine. So for example, I had a stain here this morning um, that I noticed on this jumper. And you can remove pretty much every stain with just apple cider vinegar or bicarbonate of soda and some water and both. Sponging is a really, really good technique. And I mixed a little bit of those two together with some water and just sponged it away. And then I used a fabric brush once it was dry. If you don't have a fabric 
shaver or brush um, to remove bubbles on your knitwear and that kind of thing. Just a razor is a really, really good option. Um, so that's what I did with the stain and then I just hung it up and I spritzed it with some of my clothing spray. Now, you don't need to buy a fancy clothing spray. You can literally mix a bottle, a spray bottle of water with some alcohol or some vodka, very like clean alcohol and put it in a spray bottle, mix it up and spritz your clothes when they're hanging up and it will take away a lot of the odors. So yes, in general knitwear, jeans, I'm really, really not washing that often. Things I do wash frequently are my sportswear. I will wash my leggings and sports bras and things like that uh, at no higher temperature than 30 really. I don't really use higher than 30 for anything. And I will use, you don't really need more than a tablespoon of um, powdered detergent in your load. And I avoid fabric softener at all costs. It's really not that good for our clothes and it's not that good at prolonging the longevity of our clothes either so I really really avoid that. A lot of people have asked how I keep my Converse looking so fresh. I occasionally wash them in the washing machine, I remove the laces, put them in a pillowcase with the laces and the trainers and I wash them at 30 and let them dry and I found that to be really effective. Don't do it too frequently because they are not the most solid and stable things but I find that really really effective for trainers. Now in terms of underwear and delicates, now the underwear I wear is fairly delicate. I wear stripe and stair underwear every single day, bottom half, and then I wear Hara, the label bras, and this is a stripe and stair vest with quite a kind of intricate pattern. So for anything like this, which is quite special, I tend to hand wash them. I put a little bit of hand wash in the sink with some kind of cool, warmish water. Uh, not all that much at all, mix the water around dunk the delicates in, squeeze them around for a while, let them sit for a bit and then like where the bras have been on my armpits or the gutter of my crotches, I'll just take some normal hand soap and scrub things away and I allow them to dry and I think and I think that this makes them last much 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 longer. Um, eventually you know these kind of things do wear and so they will then you know, the underwear and stuff will go in with my sportswear and my 30 degree wash or whatever. But um, I do try and hand wash them for as long as I possibly can. I really think it keeps them looking really, really nice. And then other delicate things like my Chicago Bulls jacket that I washed this morning. So that's, I bought it secondhand and vintage and it's now 14 years old. So it is really, really special and very, very old. And I just did the hand wash method with that. So put it in the bath this time because it's a bigger item with not all that much detergent. And then I did that a few times because it was quite dirty, if I'm honest. So I, I washed it twice and then kept rinsing it. And then the thing to do when you wash an item like that, which is actually polyester, or even if I was to wash an item like this, it really, really needed it. You wanna wash it once or twice, however much it needs. Um, rinse it, drain it, and then roll it up in a towel. And you can either leave it in the towel overnight or say for about, let's say minimum 20 minutes and then lay it flat to dry. Because my Chicago Bulls jacket is made from polyester, I just put it on a hanger and allowed it to air dry. And it's looking really good, I must say. Any kind of leather or suede items like jackets, mini skirts, anything like that, I think sponging is a really, really effective technique. Again, personally, I wouldn't put them anywhere near a washing machine. Um, I will basically do whatever I can to avoid using a washing machine wherever possible. And something like suede or leather, you can either brush or within the case of leather, you can sponge away any stains or any anything like that. I occasionally, We'll use a dry cleaner, especially if I have, say, borrowed a friend's dress for a wedding or something like that. And if it really, really needs a dry clean, there is a dry cleaner in London called Blank, which I really like. It's an eco dry cleaner. Um, I will leave that link down below. With things like linen, which I obviously wear a lot at this time of year, they are creased. That's the fabric. That's how linen works. So I kind of just embrace it. Like... I think a big part of slow fashion and being truly slow with fashion is knowing that not everything's gonna look perfect all the time and that's kind of okay. Um, to me, it's a bit of kind of like, it's gotta be joyful resistance in that respect. Having said that, someone on TikTok um, commented on one of my videos recently that they just can't buy secondhand clothes. They think it's really disgusting and really gross. And then someone commented underneath 
actually, if you're buying from a standard shop, high street shop, whatever, that item of clothing has gone through so many hands to get to the shop floor. And that's really, really true and really something to bear in mind. Some cultures really believe that our clothes carry a lot of emotions and stuff, which is what's why some people might not be okay with buying secondhand and that kind of thing. But for me, I'm really, really okay with it and I've trained myself to be okay with it. And if you are someone who still isn't sure about secondhand shopping because of cleanliness reasons, just know that you can wash it when you get home. I would really embrace um, YouTube as a way to, for example, learn how to sew a button back on an item of clothing. If you don't have the patience for that, totally get it. There are so many amazing seamsters everywhere. Um, if you live in a town, you will most likely have a dry cleaner. Often you can find seamsters in those places. Um, and there are also amazing companies like Sojo, who I will leave linked down below, who are trying to make repairs as accessible to as many people as possible. So if you can't do it yourself, I would definitely recommend trying to find someone who can um, instead of throwing that piece of clothing out. And I know the inevitable question is, but what do I do when my clothes are just beyond repair? When your clothes are at the point of being beyond repair, they will most likely end up in somewhere like Hand to Manto Market in Accra in Ghana polluting a community who had nothing to do with that purchase and has nothing to do with the system of overconsumption that we have been attacked with thanks to the billionaire bosses of these brands. That item of clothing is only gonna be thrown away and it's only gonna harm someone else. I know there are companies out there saying that they will take your old clothes and that they won't go to waste or they won't be thrown away because I don't have first-hand experience of that. I can't promote that to you because I would be worried that it wasn't true and it was disingenuous and it was just encouraging you to potentially buy more stuff that you, than you don't than you need. The advice I received from my friend Chloe who works in Cantamanto for the All Foundation was that when you have an item of clothing that is too worn upcycle it into something in your own home use it as a um, washing rag or a dusting mop or something um, do whatever you can to ensure that you're not throwing it away and if you're interested in learning more and really finding the joy in all of this stuff i'd really recommend this book loved clothes last by ursula de castro she is the co-founder of Fashion Revolution. She's an absolute queen. She's really, really lovely and really inspirational. She's a bit of a goddess. Absolutely love her. And this book is really, really wonderful and has some great tips in there. So yeah, I would really, really recommend this if you're interested in truly like finding the slow, joyful practice in this kind of thing. So just looking at my outfit from today, these crochet shorts are quite a good example. They're from The Knotty Ones, um, which is a Lithuanian brand. Very ethical brand, really, really love them. I would never put these in a washing machine, ever. They will be hand washed when they need it, but they will not touch a washing machine. Similarly, this denim jacket of Max's would be spot cleaned. These American apparel, uh, the Lulu grid skirt and matching top, I would put in a washing machine. I just wash them at a low temperature at 30 degrees. They wash really well, actually. Linen, 20 or 30 degrees in the washing machine. This is a polyester top, so it would take to the washing machine okay. However, because this is quite intricate, I actually hand wash this. Same with this linen skirt, I hand wash that. These cotton t-shirts I put in the uh, washing machine, no problem. Jeans we've talked about. Gym leggings, washing machine. These tracksuit bottoms are polyester, washing machine. Period pants. As soon as you take your period pants off, if you have access to being able to soak them in some water, do it, um, because it really, really prevents staining. So I tend to, if I'm at home and I'm not on the move, I'll put my period pants, say at the end of the day, in some water and just let them soak, and it really just helps them not stain. Oh, wow. I knew this was gonna happen. Since I stopped recording, I have remembered things that we definitely didn't chat about that we definitely should have done. The first is storage, clothing storage. So something that I find very, very useful, which I'm sure many of you do already, is that I put away my summer clothes when the weather gets cool 
and vice versa I put away the winter my winter clothes when the weather gets warm um, or a lot of them I do if they're not pieces that I can kind of style up in the summer and I find this really really effective because you forget about those clothes and it means that you potentially buy less which is great but it also means that if they are stored away properly um, things like those Ziploc bags are really, really good. Um, it means that they're kept clean and good and all of that wonderful stuff. I also keep lavender bags in with my clothes to prevent moths gnawing away at the fabrics. I haven't had any moth attacks um, for years now and it is simply because of the dried lavender in these little bags that I tie up and put with my clothes. Highly, highly recommend. I also know that earlier we mentioned I mentioned that I didn't use any um, fabric conditioner in with my clothes. If you want to make things smell nice, just put a couple of drops of any essential oil in with the load. So lavender oil is really, really nice. Um, and that's really nice for bed sheets. And it's also good for moths. Double pro. And then quickly on storage, storing your clothes properly, things like not overloading hangers, is a really good way to keep them looking fresh. Um, things like knitwear I don't put on hangers because it can drag the shoulders down. Um, so I fold my knitwear and put them on shelves. I hang things like shirts. I roll trousers up. I can't believe I forgot this one because this is such an important one. Having clothes for home, so things like tracksuit bottoms, baggy t-shirts for me in my case, things I don't really care about. I put those clothes on as soon as I get home. So for example, yesterday, um, I got back from, you know, being out all day wearing jeans and that Chicago Bulls jacket. I took them off as soon as I got home and then put on my at home clothes. And what this does is it just means you wear the things that you really, really love less, which means that they stay fresher for longer. And then the things like the baggy t-shirts and the tracksuit bottoms, that I can easily fling in the washing machine if they get dirty. And if they do get dirty, who cares? Because no one's really seeing them. I mean, you guys see them sometimes, um, but no one else really sees them. I don't wear them kind of out and about. I find having an at-home uniform and a out and then my out clothes very, very, very helpful. Can't recommend that enough. And if I think of anything else, I'll come back. I really hope I don't, but I can't, I really miss some essential stuff there. Good morning. It has been a couple of days. I spent some of the time we've been apart thinking about the things that I forgot to talk about in the video and then panicking and thinking, should I refilm the video? And then giving myself a hard time for not writing notes and referring to notes in the video, but then thinking it's okay to just riff. It will be more natural. It's a vlog. Anyway, um, the first thing is to wash clothes of similar colors when you put them in the washing machine. So separate your darks and your whites. Only wash your whites with your whites. That will really prolong the whiteness of these clothes. I know this is really simple, but it's really, really, it's important. And the second one, and this is a hard one when you've spent time either at university, when it's all about just getting your clothes washed as efficiently as possible and as quickly as possible. Or if you live in the US where most homes don't have washing machines and you have to go to a local laundrette or various other places that where you have to go to a laundrette. Don't overload your machine. So really, really try not to because it just means that the clothes won't, won't work as efficiently. Those are the two things that I forgot, which I know are obvious and you probably already know, but I wanted to flag anyway. Also, this book just arrived and I feel so excited to read it. The Anti-Capitalist Book of Fashion by Tansy Hoskins, who is quite iconic. This is the jacket after being hand washed. Smells so good and just looks absolutely good as new and feels good as new as well. Oh, so good, so good. So I'm very happy with that. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope there was at least one thing in it that you found useful and I will see you very, very soon. And I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are in this beautiful world. Bye.